They always use that. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Okay, well, it's installed day on the Wrigley shovel mount install on the Rhino Rack. Obviously when I get down to that one, I'll get the hole started first. to already have a hole here so all that I've done is I've lined this this bit up with the, roughly the center of the actual shovel where the shovel head goes into so I've bolt this one up <laughs> okay I've lined this up pretty much straight so I'm just gonna drill it with Bracket's still there. All right, I'll do up these two bolts and we'll get done. Definitely really enjoying the shovel holder. There's no messing around, undoing bolts. All that you need to do is just line it up. You can pull back and you're in place. Piece of piss. Definitely good if you're um, stuck in the bog. You have to get out and dig yourself out, stuck in the sand. It's nice and quick. You're not sitting there fucking around. Yeah, I'm pretty happy, pretty stable. Also another little hot tip, the reason why I did put it on the back like that is because if you hit a branch while you're forward driving, if you had it the other way around, you hit the branch, it pulls it forward, it may flick up, you may lose your shovel. Where if you put it on backwards like that, you hit a branch, all that's gonna do is push it more towards that. So yeah, that's the main reason why I left it like that. All right, so the shovel mount's all installed now uh, what I ended up using was the drill with a number six drill bit uh, two 10 mil spanners we so I had to change out the bolts he is actually putting a uh, u-bolt in the kit and he's making the bracket for the where the spring the cylinder is a little bit longer so yeah you can you get a little bit more movement and adjustment for it uh, and yeah you will actually be able to drill out your own bolt holes as well uh, also, hammer and a punch is what I use. If you're using his um, bolts, you'll probably need a number four Allen key as well. Uh, that's it for the tools. Obviously, I used a rag on top of the roof as well, so all those aluminium shavings didn't scratch my roof. I also put a little bit of ply on the top of it where I was drilling just in case I pop through, which you actually can see there, I did it once, you don't actually damage your roof. Uh, hot little tip there. Um, as for the shovel itself, I did have to cut off 300 mil, so it was probably about that, that much longer, roughly. And the length on mine, obviously your one will be different depending on what car you got and where you put in it. If you put it on top of a canopy, or if you put it on top of a roof rack, whether or not it's a, like a 200 series or a dual cab like mine. Um, 200 series, you won't have to cut anything off it, I don't think so. But from here to here, from both ends, it's 1100. And where it actually goes into the cylinder, the spring-loaded cylinder is 80 mil. So a hot little tip there. 
Um, you can make it more towards 50 mil is all that you need in there. But yeah, I went a little bit, a little bit further. It does make it a little bit harder to actually get in and out, but it's more stable, obviously, off-road. So yeah, he is actually selling these kits for 200 bucks. Um, I actually quite like them. I would have actually paid that 200 bucks easily for them. I think the Rhino uh, Rack ones are around about the same price anyway. Um, you can get in contact with him on Facebook if you're looking at buying one. It will also be at the Mornington 4x4 show. Uh, check that out. He, you'll have a stand there with his actual car, which is um, pretty amazing. A very awesome trade setup on that thing, and he's got something pretty cool underneath the suspension. That's who I'm going through with mine, believe it or not. Anyway, guys, it only took 10 minutes to install. Hope you liked it. There goes the shovel. Hope you liked the video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Cheers.